my bull breakers, before we get to the news, because this one's going to be a little bit of a downer, I want to give a big shout out, uh, not paid or anything, um, but to the Verizon customer support Twitter account. Because I put something out on Twitter complaining about I keep getting uh, Fios people door to door and I can't afford it. And I keep telling them that and they keep coming. And so I said something on Twitter and they actually talked to me and got me off the list. So good customer service representatives go a long way in my book. But now that we're done with the news, let's go to the news. I apologize. This one's going to be a little less high energy and humor than I try and keep these. But I woke up this morning to such a wall of anger and outrage that I'm just tired. I shouldn't have to spend an hour on my Facebook and Twitter trying to find something, anything good to get me out of bed in the morning. I shouldn't have to be this angry and despairing within 20 minutes of waking up. So I don't have a specific argument to break up today, but just sort of a general at the world. Why are we all so determined to be unhappy? I'll admit, I'm quick to anger sometimes, probably more often than sometimes. This morning I was woken up a fair bit earlier than I wanted to be by a weed whacker running outside my window. Sure, 9 a.m. is probably a reasonable time to be doing such a thing, but I still feel like I could have waited an hour. It was about 10.30 when I wrote this and couldn't hear a thing outside. Couldn't they have done it then? <sighs> and yes, I went onto social media and I complained about the noise. I understand that I'm part of this problem. But I see so much more than just frustration at insignificant first world problems like my own irritation. I see articles about why you should never ever eat at X number of restaurants because they do awful terrible things to their people, the company, the world, their employees, uh, all the things. I see rants about how every zoo ever should be shut down and don't get them started on SeaWorld. I see raging battles about gun control, the Second Amendment, healthcare, same-sex unions. The list goes on and on. And I'm seeing them from both sides. People arguing in favor of some places, saying that while change is slow, they're seeing the change happening. I see articles about how some animals have only survived in captivity because of poaching or whatnot. I honestly can't recall what the truth about SeaWorld is anymore because I've seen so many different articles both in favor and against it that I can't keep it straight anymore. I won't even touch the gunfight here. That's more of a can of worms than I want to touch this early in the morning. Today I woke up to articles about a trans woman and her comments to President Obama. Following in the footsteps of many dissidents before her, she interrupted the president in order to raise her topic, thus holding up his speech for something like two or three minutes. The president treated her as a heckler, telling her, quote, Listen, you're in my house. It's not respectful. When she continued to speak, he had her removed from the room. I've got some articles that I was using for reference down in the description below. On my feeds were outrage everywhere that the president would silence an LGBT activist the way he did, and that he clearly didn't care about the LGBT community and should be taking these voices better into consideration. Gutierrez herself mentioned silencing trans voices. I come to this argument from an interesting direction. Under some definitions, I'm considered a part of the trans community. I identify as gender fluid, something I'm very open about, and I struggle with gender expression myself on a day-to-day -day basis. So part of me feels like I should be right in there with the arguments, fighting for the voices to be heard. But I'm not. Because I see her as a heckler. I don't care what the precedent is for people interrupting the president during speeches. I don't care how important or just her topic is. And trust me, I think she has a point, given from everything I've seen of what she wanted to say. She could be fighting for the most just cause in the world. And I still don't think it excuses her behavior. But as much as I don't understand those calling for the president's head on the matter, I also don't understand the massive backlash against her. She got booed out of the White House. I don't know. I don't agree with what she did, but I also don't agree with potentially humiliating someone. I don't know. I know I say that a lot on here, but I just don't know. I feel like too many people are quick to anger and judge and take to the streets with pitchforks and fire because they have been put upon without trying to talk about the issue and what can be done about it. It's mornings like these that I made this blog for, but when it rears its ugly head, I'm too tired to talk about what I wanted to bring up. Yes, 
Trans voices matter. Black lives matter. Everyone matters. Everyone. Genesis Gutierrez isn't the enemy. She's a voice we should listen to, just in a more appropriate time and place. And then maybe we can sit down with the president and figure out what can be done about her concerns. When there's more listening happening than fighting, maybe I'll finally stop waking up so tired. And as I finished writing this earlier today, I could hear the weed whacker running outside, so it was probably about quarter to eleven. Maybe me getting woken up early saved someone else from a worse morning than mine. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Let the change start with me then. I'll stop complaining. So, until next time, I am R, you are awesome, and I hope you have a good day. Break.